of his closest friends and associates, Hall of Famer Pete Newell. You know, Coach Knight is somewhat like the weather. You know, everybody has an opinion of him. And uh, I'm going to reflect, I hope, the opinion of the basketball world. Bobby Knight, as a coach, what he reflects to the coaches of not only this country, but internationally. Uh, Bobby is a coach. He stands for discipline. Uh, his players uh, exhibit the discipline out there in the court. And the discipline that he uh, has demanded of them is the same discipline that has allowed them, when they go into their private lives, to be very successful. He's demanded academic pursuit. Now, discipline and academic pursuit have not been really popular uh, words or things to follow in these last two decades of college basketball. But he doesn't allow any slippage in the part of the athletes as it pertains to their, their academics. Uh, I, I've had players tell me that they would rather miss a, a really important game-ending shot than to get up in the academic carpet and go before Coach Knight. Another thing he stands for, and what I'm talking about, this is what he means to the coaches of basketball, not the media, but the coaches of basketball, not only in this country, but throughout the world. He, he teaches respect. Uh, the, his players respect the university, IU. They have a respect for the program. And having a respect for the program, they have a respect for each other. And one thing that stands out, again, in this modern basketball, uh, college basketball world, is respect of his players for the rules and Coach Knight for the rules. Uh, there's been some controversies over the years, but never any violations of the NCAA rules. And I think it's really important today that coaches realize that you can win uh, within the rules. Too often we hear, well, you have to cheat to win. You have to cheat to keep your job. And uh, Bobby's Indiana program has shown that you don't have to cheat and that you can win. And is, uh, certainly his uh, record reflects that. I don't think in the history of basketball there has been a more popular clinician in this country, and again, in Europe, I, I spend a great deal of time in Asia, and uh, no matter what country I go to, they, they ask me, do you think Bobby Knight would come and speak to our coaches in this country, whether it's the Philippines, Thailand, uh, wherever? And uh, his uh, enormous contributions to the game and his influence in the game uh, is spread far beyond our shores. And the beautiful thing about him when he speaks, he shares these great concepts he has of the game. And uh, that doesn't always happen in clinics. Sometimes coaches will speak maybe for two days, and they'll never share really what, what it is that has made them successful. And what he means to the game in so many ways, he's been such a positive influence uh, with the, the standards that he has set at the university. and. Uh, uh, an influence that, uh, that uh, transcends uh, winning, uh, teaching coaches to, to go about their jobs the right way and to demand from their players uh, certain uh, standards of uh, conduct both on and off the court. Uh, he probably is the most innovative coach in the game today. Uh, there's a style of basketball, uh, motion offense with a passing game, uh, it's been in the game for many, many years. Uh, goes back before the war. But, but Bobby has refined that. And I'd say that at the high school level, both men and women and the college level, there was a time not too long ago where maybe 95% of the coaches played some form of the motion game as it was interpreted by Coach Knight. And uh, this is extended again to the international game. He has shared these concepts, as I say, all over the world. And finally, I don't think anybody that I've run into in sports, and I've been in them a long time, has more friends than Bobby. 
Uh, he gives friendship. He, you couldn't have a better friend. And, uh, and it's reflected again in uh, so many people that are here tonight that uh, come here just to see how Bobby get this great honor. And as proud as I am to have him ask me to introduce him, I'm even more proud to have him as my friend. Thank you. Pete, if you're ever asked by the people in Puerto Rico for me to come there and give a clinic, would you tell them I'm tied up? If that's uh, Billy, Billy wanted me to tell the uh, the mayor that uh, if you think red cigars don't smell, you need to have your nose checked the next time you're with your doctor. I I've always felt that there's a real difference between honors accorded players and honors accorded coaches. The first really outstanding player that I was ever around on a daily basis was John Havlicek as a freshman at Ohio State. And I played with John for four years and I watched him play for 16 years with the Celtics. And he remains 13 years after he retired uh, my all-time favorite player. And there are a lot of players. many of whom are here tonight that I marveled at over the years because of three things that I think a great player has to have, an ability, determination to use that ability, and a, and a heart that allows him to use that ability all the time. And, and I think an honor accorded a player is truly an individual honor. But the honor accorded a coach is, I think, considerably different. It is not an individual honor, it's a team honor. And I've been very fortunate in having an opportunity to coach at two great institutions, the Military Academy at West Point and Indiana University. And what I think I am as a coach is a representative of an entire organization. And that organization involves a lot of things. It has administrators, doctors, trainers, secretaries, fans, friends. And I have people from each of those categories from both schools here tonight. It also involves family. My two boys are here tonight. The oldest one, Tim, I'm very proud of. He's a graduate of Stanford. Came to me when he was a youngster and, and said that, Dad, you know, I'm not a really great athlete. What do you think? And I said, Tim, I think if you study, you may own athletes someday came to me a couple weeks ago and said, Dad, athletes are too expensive to own today. I guess that's a result of his Stanford education. The younger son, Pat, I'm equally proud of. Uh, Patrick uh, was a freshman on my team this year at in Indiana. Uh, he not only has me as a father, he has me as a coach. I'm going to redshirt Patrick next year, so he'll have me as a coach for five years in addition to being a father. I'm not sure what kind of a basketball player Patrick will turn out to be. I think he has a chance to be a very good one if he works at it. But I can say this, that when he's done having had me as both a father and a coach, Patrick Knight will undoubtedly have the most blistered ass in the history of basketball. <laughs> My My wife, Karen, is here tonight. Probably no coach before in the history of the game has ever had to go home to a wife who is a member of a Coaches Hall of Fame. Karen is a member of the Oklahoma Coaches Hall of Fame, where she coached three state champions, the last of which had an undefeated 30-0 season. Sometimes she thinks that she knows more than I do about the game, and quite often she's correct, although at this point, she has never admitted to knowing more than Pete does. Last night, one of the bellhops came up to me, and Karen and Pete were to meet me. We're going to go get a, a little bite to eat or something to drink. And one of the bellhops in the hotel came up to me and said, Coach, the Newells are downstairs waiting for you. I think that in addition to the ingredients that I've mentioned in a coach's organization, Next would come assistant coaches, and nobody 
that's ever coached has been more fortunate in having outstanding assistant coaches like I've had. And I think that at this moment in time, no one has ever had a better coaching staff than I currently have, and they're here tonight also. I think that a coach has to have people that can help him and from whom he can learn and people with whom he can discuss different phases and facets of the game of basketball. And again, in that regard, I don't think anybody in the history of coaching has been more fortunate than I have been. I had the opportunity to play in college for one of the great coaches of all time, Fred Taylor. And I think Coach Taylor did more for basketball in his conference during the time that he was a coach at Ohio State in our conference, the Big Ten, than perhaps any coach that's ever coached in any conference anywhere. He changed the entire concept of basketball in our league. When I was coaching at the academy, and then the first year I was at Indiana, during those seven years, I had an opportunity to meet and to get to know five of the really great coaches in all the history of basketball. And those coaches were Red Auerbach, Claire B., Henry Iba, Everett Dean, and Joe Lapchick. And each, in his own way, took a lot of time, a lot of effort to help me and answer questions that I had, and discuss various facets that were involved with coaching. Pete Newell is the first coach ever to have coached an NIT champion, an NCAA champion, and an Olympic champion. And outside of the people in my immediate family for the past 23 years, no one has been closer to me than Pete has been. I, my dad died in 1970, and I had first met Pete in 1969. And Pete has taken the place of my dad. He's been a great teacher and a great person for me to know. And, and no one could have been more blessed with the relationship and coaching than I have been having that with Pete Newell. And I think the final ingredient in a coach's organization is players. I've never felt comfortable with the award Coach of the Year or Coach of Anything. I think there's a much more appropriate nomenclature that could be used, and that would be Team of the Year. Because for a team to develop to a point where a coach is recognized for what that team has done is an indication that the players, the assistant coaches, everyone involved has really put forth an outstanding effort. And that is truly a team honor. And the rewards in coaching are not tied to wins and losses and and championships. I don't think any of us that have truly enjoyed and loved to coach would ever feel that that's what our ultimate reward is, a win or a championship. Rather, I would like to think that coaches would feel as I do. Watching a former player coach a team to a national championship, building that team as the team should be built through honest recruiting, excellent teaching, and an interest in the best things for those players. A player like Mike Krzyzewski at Duke this year, who I coached in Army. I think that a, a coach is rewarded by seeing a player go away from basketball and go into something else. For the last couple of years, I've watched one of my players do that. I watched one of my players articulate on television and through the radio 
the game of basketball. Ray, an understanding of the game through his ability to concisely and doing anything concisely as an analyst is an art that has been discovered by very few at this point in time. <laughs> to do something concisely and accurately and articulately like Quinn Buckner has done with his career as a television analyst. <laughs> or the reward might be receiving two letters from unit commanders in Desert Storm, one prior to the launching of the first air mission and one after the military's mission had been totally completed, indicating that having played college basketball had been a great asset to each in his preparation for the assignment that one had as a battalion commander and the other one had as a regimental commander in Desert Storm. I think more than anything else that a coach receiving an honor is a team honor. And that team is made up of all of the people that I've mentioned. And it is on behalf of those people, the doctors, the trainers, the fans, the friends, the administrators, the assistant coaches, and most of all, on behalf of the players, that I very appreciatively accept this induction into the Basketball Hall of Fame. And I hope that as time passes, those people that have helped with the six basketball teams and the 20 basketball teams I have thus far coached at Indiana will feel that this award is their award, a team award. Thank you very much.